Welcome, everybody, to Intraday Price Targets with Tyler Yell. Uh, it is a pleasure to be with you all. We're going to be walking through a methodology that I've grown, grown very fond with over the years uh, of, of identifying intraday price targets as well as using some of these levels to identify potential reversals that are developing um, and, and, and really clean up and bring focus to intraday trading. Uh, with that, let me go ahead and get some housekeeping taken care of. Hope everybody is doing well as we begin to round out the year. Uh, the risk disclaimer states that trading foreign exchange on margin carries a high level of risk and may not be suitable for all investors. Uh, I'll leave this up for a few more minutes. Um, I'm also, while this is up, I'm gonna share with you guys in the chat uh, to all uh, the recording of last week's session. Uh, main reason why I wanna do that is just in, just in case you're not able to, to sit through us for the entire session, uh, I'd like you to get the methodology, naturally the information. Um, a lot of it is is what we call evergreen, meaning it's, you know, it's, it's, it's timeless content. Um, however, there are some, there are some uh, more uh, sensitive components when, when we do these intra-week sessions where we talk about uh, specific strong currencies or specific current uh, weak currencies and what's behind those uh, but all that being said I just shared the, the link there uh, this session is being recorded as well so that will be uploaded to YouTube so you can you can watch that as well uh, when that's uh, fully fully uploaded and ready to go probably will be tomorrow um, but with that being said let me get you my contact information therefore if you need to reach out to me and one reason that a lot of people like to reach out to me after this session in particular uh, is for access to the spreadsheet and uh, if you've if you've been a uh, a registered member of this particular webinar you've likely already received the, the spreadsheet in fact I tried to get it out to everybody uh, last week right before the FOMC announcement which uh, it's you know is, is one of those and, and it happens <laughs> When, when you have a lot of volatility that the market overshot both price targets. We, you'll see we have two price targets, uh, an intraday target uh, and a breakout target. Uh, but but given what happened at the press conference uh, with, with Janet Yellen and quite simply the, uh, the the hesitation almost that she had about upcoming fiscal policy as, as possibly something that will cause inflation to overshoot and put them in a, a scenario where they might have to hike more aggressively than they like, uh, that, that naturally brought a bit more reality to the projection of three hikes in 2017, three three hikes in 2018 and three hikes in 2019. Um and, and so with that, you, you, we have seen some dollar strength. And, uh, you know, one thing that we're going to talk about today uh, is is the, the likely continuation of dollar strength. In fact, that was the theme that we had in yesterday's session, the macro trading themes for the week uh, about what could cause the, the dollar to continue strengthening. Uh, one, one fun story uh, or, or fun artifact, if you will, uh, is that a, a combination of the, uh, the two fives and tens in, U, in the U.S., yield curve and the two fives and tens in the German yield curve uh, is at the widest in 25 years. And that's that's really going back to one, one institutional desk's uh, analysis pointed this out, but it's basically going back in, until, you know, they, they started, they started bringing these, uh, bringing these records together. Uh, it's, 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 it surpassed the 199 uh widening, which is the previous record, and that's when euro dollar went below parity. And, and so quite simply, while it's not a, uh, you know, it's, it's not a guarantee, uh, a lot of banks are looking at euro USD below parity. And, and naturally, that brings with it uh, likely a higher dollar yen, um, a, you know, lower, lower cable, which uh, I put out a, a, a analyst pick on uh, on the lower cable as we've broken through a key channel. All that being said, you can kind of bring together these macro themes to come up with uh, with these intraday targets, and that's that's really how I like to, to bring this all together. All right, let me give you the 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 overview for today, the flyby, if you will, of what we're going to be covering. Uh, I'll do a quick a quick you know bout uh, preach, if you will, on on why price targets can be very helpful. Uh, the two types of targets that we like to use and which ones are worth focusing on. Uh, how how we comprise volatility into the price targets, and you know for for my view, that's that's incredibly important. Uh, you know vo volatility is a is a breathing component of the market, um, and and because of that, if 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 the market is not volatile. You should not have volatile price targets. If the market is volatile, you should have volatile price targets, and that's that's really what we're looking at here. Uh, we'll talk about how to how to use these targets specifically within the current market, um, building building a bias for which which targets to use. Uh, summary of some of the recent points that we've talked about over the prior sessions, uh, and then I do encourage uh, questions and answers throughout. Anytime you guys can can uh, pepper me with questions. Whoops. 
wrong direction there. Anytime you guys can pepper me with questions, I, I, I really do prefer that. So uh, de definitely want to want to encourage those questions. There's there's one good one here. Um, Colin says uh, on the daily chart, oil has a three drive pattern complete, followed by an island reversal. How would you trade this if both these patterns are correct? Um, and what we're going to talk about is when you when you look at and I'll just I guess kind of give a teaser here because it's it's a very good question I don't want to leave it un uh, uh, untouched Colin uh, but when when you have something of that scenario typically if you have an island reversal something where you, where you expect a a further downside to to result uh, typically that's going to be a multi day pattern and you're going to have to wipe out a lot of long positions you're going to wipe wipe out a lot of momentum that being said I'm going to start to use those downside targets. So naturally, every day we're going to have bullish targets and bearish targets. I'm going to use those downside targets, especially one or two days, as basically bait, you know, kind of testing the market, if you will, to, to see if this island reversal or this three drive pattern uh, is is legit, i.e. we're about to we're about to move lower. Uh, and if that's the case, then we should. You know, as we've seen with multiple markets, whether it's dollar yen upside, DXY upside, euro dollar downside, um, Aussie dollar downside, you're going to hit those downside targets. Um, not day in and day out, but pretty close. And so all that being said, usually that's going to start with both the intraday and the breakdown targets getting hit consecutive times. And that's going to start to give you that scenario where you start to look for uh, a small rip or an interday retracement higher to enter a sell position. And with that, that's that's when you start to build in this, this comfort of what's happening. And you kind of see how the market is reacting in the sense of, you know, you, you know what is a likely bearish reversal uh, or a bearish correction before a, before a resumption of the trend towards one of these downside targets. So, you know, you ask me what time it is, I'll tell you how to build a clock. That's absolutely a weakness of mine but the main thing there is that when you when you get these signals or these patterns that that signify a reversal might be coming i want to start to see one or two downside targets getting hit uh, meaning one day or two days worth of downside targets getting hit before I start look to build a you know a campaign if you will of of bearish trades in a market i hope that helps Colin excellent question and Please, if you guys can bring more questions like that, that that's going to make for a fun session. All right, and so let's let's go ahead and get to uh, get to uh, kind of the meat of the session. So, wh wh why use targets? I, I would say if if there's one thing it does is it really it strengthens the focus, uh, and in strengthening the focus, it helps limit risk and, and helps helps traders remove a lot of the hope out of the market. I I would say you know while while you've likely looked at our traits of successful traders report and if you haven't it's it's excellent reading some of it's common sense some of it's not and what's not i think makes it worth the price of admission which isn't saying much because it's a it's a free report but but the the idea there is that you see a lot of traders over time hold losses twice as large as the as the winners they close out and i tell you i can tell you i've seen am i am i you know i've, I've been uh in, in fact uh, it was nine years ago that I was that I was uh, first really brought into a full FX brokerage environment. Uh, before I just had experience to it in the kind of in more of the, uh, the the U.S. investment side, uh, but not just in hands dirty with with uh, the FX brokerage world. All that being said, over the years, talking to what has been thousands and thousands of traders over the years, um, the easily identifiable issue I see is traders basically sitting in a bad trade on the hope that what they what they thought they saw originally to put them in the trade will eventually come to fruition. Uh, and naturally, one, one of the things I've shared with you before is that trading trading brings to, to, to front two things that people hate, not just traders hate, but people hate. And that's being wrong and that's losing money. And, and you actually have to be comfortable with both of those scenarios on a daily basis in order to trade well. Uh, you know, it's 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 uh, it's unfortunate, but it's true that some of my best trades are what what is known as a, a stop and reverse type of trade, meaning that I get taken out of my initial view and entered into my opposing view. And and while that that might sound very confusing to traders that will come into the market with a very firm view on what has to happen, I I, I don't believe in a this has to happen. You know, I, I will have alternate kind of scenarios that, that might play out given this or that, uh, whether it's a sentiment, you know, sentiment reversal, a fundamental reversal, or a technical reversal. Uh, all, all that being said, I try to remove a lot of that hope out of the trading, and I think that's what price targets allow you to do. It, it allows you to, to, to tighten your focus and remove a lot of that hope that traders you know, really get hit by in a negative fashion with their trading. 
And so, of course, we want to be using stop losses, but the idea here is by narrowing your focus, this is something that uh, James Stanley, I think, is famous for. By narrowing your focus, you also you also narrow your, your emotional attachment to it. Uh, so you can see that, that comment there, don't marry the trade. And unfortunately, most traders, you know, marry the one that they uh, they really wish they divorced from the beginning or <laughs> or never never got in in the first place. Uh, you know, the, the joke I shared with you guys last last week is, you know, the difference between a, a, a trader and an investor um, is that an investor is, is, is a trader with the trade gone wrong. Uh, and they, they will hold on to that trade, seeing if it'll play out right. Uh, the the uh, the easy the easy diagnosis, but hard in practice, is is to never let that self never let yourself get into that scenario in the first place. Cut that trade as soon as your reason for getting into that trade is is taken out. And you know, one of the uh, I think one of the the more insightful phrases that I've heard is that risk management is is really kind of personality management or trader management, uh, and and I think that's true. And, and of, again, the idea here with these price targets is that we're really limiting our focus in, in order so that we don't have either a, uh, a a a bunch of hope in a bad trade, or we get emotionally involved in a, in a trade, uh, good or bad. And the reason why I say good or bad is because some traders, what they'll do is they'll they'll be in a trade, things will be working out correctly. There'll be 100 or 200 pips in their favor. You know, they'll start, they'll start, they'll start counting their money in their mind and thinking about how great of a trade this is. Uh, and then it starts to move past, move, move against them. Uh, and again, they're mentally, they're thinking, well, this is such a great trade. I was 100, 200 pips in the profit. Well, they, they might've caught a blow off top and, and gotten in, provided some liquidity on people getting out at the, at the end of that move. Uh, and and those, those are often the most painful ones. Those, those ones, not that are immediately against you because some traders can just come in and say, Oh, no, I was, I was reading the market wrong there, but the ones that actually go profitable at first and then go against you, a lot of traders say, no, I was onto something. The market was moving in my favor appropriately. Uh, I just need to give it some time for it to work back in my favor. That could be a, a deadly disease for, for traders. All right. The two types of targets that we're going to be taking a look at is, and these are not swing targets, and these are these are intraday targets. However, I, I will say that if volatility does does reduce, as we have seen, you know, kind of ebbs and flows throughout the week based on on the calendar, it it can be up to 48 hours. You know, when I think of swing, I think of multi-week trading. Uh, these these types of targets, again, when when we look at the two, which are an intraday target based on yesterday's extremes high or low plus or minus the ATR and then the breakout target which is a, a calculation that I'll share with you in the session you know typically we're looking at these getting hit during the session and and I think there's already a few today that have gotten hit um, oil uh, we'll, we'll take a look at a few uh, but the the thing to note here is that quite simply we are we are looking at again within a session or two of these trades getting hit for better or for worse, again, either getting stopped out or getting getting your getting your target hit. Uh, the the main thing I would note is is basically you know the intraday targets are going to be more of a go to target for most traders. The breakout targets are going to tend to be less reliable because they they are by their very nature going to be further out on the scale in fact let me let me pr provide this next slide uh, for those of you that have attended the session before this is a visualization visualization you have seen but at the same time i think it's very helpful and and what it shows is it shows a a idealized distribution of of, of price and when i say idealized meaning that if you've ever seen a market profile before that's that's the idea that this is based off of, but the idea here is that if you look at the intraday targets, that's going to be basically the 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 one standard deviation, whereas you know two sigma is going to be out here. It's going to be the breakout targets, and the idea here is that quite simply, you we, we expect naturally the ATR targets to get hit a good deal more often than the breakout targets. One of the things that I'm going to share with you guys later is that I I highly encourage you to. Uh, wait or just not enter a enter a trade that is the market is trading at the breakout target. Naturally, if, if we're looking for if you want to say the left is let me see if I can get the the pen here. I'm usually not good with this, but you know so if this is if this is a, a bearish environment down here, this is a bullish environment up here. You know naturally, whoops. Not very good. Naturally, what you want to be doing is in a, in a bullish environment. So we'll say, you know, DXY here. And we'll say uh, EUR here. 
just as an example. So, so for here, basically for, for the DXY buying, you basically want to be looking at buying here and looking to take the trade on an intraday basis either to here or to here depending on the volatility of what's coming up. If it's a news event, as, you, as you'll see, we'll talk about, those breakout targets are going to have a little bit more juice coming in. If it's a, if it's a typical trading day, you're going to be focused on these ATR targets. Let me take, let's see if I can clear this off. All right. And then for Euro USD, you're going to be looking at entering here in a bearish environment. You know, so any short-term strength Kind of sell the rip environment, and you'll be looking to take a trade either here or on a more volatile day, higher price announcement. We've got some U.S. data coming out tomorrow, uh, some CAD data coming out tomorrow. We've got NZD, uh, New Zealand GDP tomorrow, and then CAD GDP on Friday. So if you're trading some of those, you know, those, could, those could provide the, the, the volatility towards the breakout target. However, given the, the light institutional liquidity this week, it's it's, it's more appropriate, I think, to focus on these ATR targets. But I hope, I hope this visualization is helpful because it really just kind of shows you what to what to focus on given given what's provided. And we'll talk a little bit more about that throughout the session. Now, now Colin had a, a great question earlier. In fact, let me let me bring up. I actually had to restart my computer, so I uh, want to bring back up the charts I was looking at earlier. But <clears throat> Colin asked about what happens when you see a potential reversal developing. All right, so today we're looking at, we had rollover in, in oil. So you had that gap there. And the question then becomes, okay, are we going to see a, a breakdown target? As we as we build out the, the downside targets, and I'll, I already have them developed for oil, uh, the, the argument they're going to start to look at is, okay, given this move here, we obviously have a, a bullish trend. We're at, you know, we just touched 17 month highs. Uh, we're sitting above this long-term long -term resistance or H2 resistance, I should say. Um, and with that, if we, if we see this hold of support, we should continue to focus on the upside. Colin's good question was, at what point do we start to look at these downside targets? And what I noted is that when you have these targets developed, you're basically going to want to come in and say, okay, what are the intraday bearish and intraday, uh, or intra, excuse me, intraday bearish and breakout bearish targets. And if those start getting hit and we start taking out support, then you can start to look at getting in those trades on the downside with a higher probability component. Now, you could trade whichever direction you want to. I'm obviously not going to be able to, to dictate how you trade, and that's, that's all good and well. What I would say is in looking at higher probability trades, we want to have that momentum. We want to have really that, that, that trend backing us up. You know, I used to say... Uh, kind of tongue-in-cheek that, you know, a strong trend will erase many sins, you know, in the, in the spirit of love will cover a multitude of sins, trading in the direction of, of the trend will cover a multitude of trading sins, and, and I've seen that before, where traders will sometimes, you know, against the internal, the internal judgment, i.e., they like, they'd like to catch a reversal, but at the same time, they know, given how strong a trend is, I should be focusing on that on those targets in the direction of the trend. And so they will enter a trade, but maybe if you look at the slide we talked about earlier, here, I'm gonna clear this off again. They might enter here, because they got too excited, and so they entered on an extended move. However, in the strongest trend, the next day you start over again, and those strong trends, if you start here, if this is the open, the low of the day might be here, right? And the high might be here. The close might be here, if that, if that makes sense. I know it's kind of hard to visualize because it's, it's on a horizontal as opposed to a vertical axis like we typically see a price candle. But trading in the direction of a strong trend covers a multitude of trading sense. And so that's why we want to look at filtering these out from a trading perspective in the direction of the trend. From an analysis perspective, this is what Colin was asking about earlier, we can look for those opposing targets to get hit in order to say, is there a reversal developing? Is, is this signaling a potential trend change? Uh, and so that's, that's a very helpful approach. These are just some of the indicators I like to use. In fact, last week we had a, g a gentleman in the room by the name of Todd, and, and Todd was noting uh, how, how he likes to use Ichimoku. Basically, what he was saying, and I, I do a uh, Ichimoku webinar, uh, I will not be in the office tomorrow, I'll be out for the holiday season for a few, uh, for a few days, 
But the, the main idea that Todd shared with us, which is a very good one, is to basically use the daily nine-day midpoint from Ichimoku. And with Ichimoku, let me pull up dollar yen. Dollar yen's been a, a poster child of this of late. In, in dollar yen, this nine-day midpoint here, which let me, let me take off the 26 period midpoint. So we just have this nine-day midpoint here. Basically, what he was noting is that if price is above here on a daily chart, he's going to go down to a four-hour or a one-hour chart and look for bullish targets, only bullish targets. And so he uses that as a filter to say, okay, if we're above this nine-day midpoint, that's my focus. My focus is bullish. On the flip side of that, if we're below, like we've seen more often than not, in Euro and USD, I'm going to be looking for these bearish targets and, and going to continue to focus on bearish targets. If we get above this nine-day midpoint, then basically he, he recalibrates and he's going to look at, okay, are we in a bearish environment, but just a strong retracement? In that case, I might hang, I might hang out. But if we actually start breaking through some different levels of resistance, showing a bullish reversal, then I will start looking at these bullish targets. And so that's how these are, these are a living, breathing strategy that, that develop with the overall market trends. These are just a few other components that you can look at in order to develop a bias, a moving average filter. You can use James Stanley's famous finger trap trading strategy. Uh, you can use Ichimoku, uh, one month risk reversals. That's just basically looking at option, uh, put and call premiums, who's paying most for what. If you think about that as downside or upside protection, typically when there is a, 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 a strong bid being placed. In fact, let me see if I have this here. Let's see if I can bring this over. This is just a, uh, a Bloomberg a Bloomberg view. I wanted to make it a bit bigger, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to. So with that, basically what you're looking at here, and the main thing I wanted to show you guys is that you, you're naturally going to have a, a downside put premium for yen crosses because that's basically a, a risk off, uh, a risk off carry trade hedge but what's interesting is the premiums being played paid for put options on Aussie dollar euro dollar Kiwi dollar uh, those those are those are starting to those are starting to become significantly more expensive than calls and so that could show from the options market a downside premium which again would just open up that view that okay we've got dollar strength people in the options market are paying a premium for downside protection as opposed to upside protection so i'm going to be looking for some of those downside targets developing and then as we talked about yesterday some of the macro themes sovereign bond spreads i opened up talking about euro dollar the uh the german u.s uh combined yield spread is at the widest in 25 years signaling downside pressure and then this is the component we were talking about with Colin. Watch out for bottom targets getting hit in a bullish trend. And that could signal a reversal. The opposite there for you know upside targets getting hit in a bearish trend could also signal a trend change. All right, next next slide. Next thing to keep an eye on is just a is just a an expansion on that idea. But what I want to just bring out is the fact that it's it's very helpful, I would say, for a lot of traders, not only to have that fixed that fixed component going into a trade as to at what point is this trade no longer right uh, you know that's that's the idea that I was that I was sharing with you with the the stop and reversals uh, with the with the stop and reverse basically coming in and saying basically coming in and saying I do not know how this is going to work I do not know exactly what the outcome is going to be I'm going to have a, a technical bias uh, and in fact I, I, this is a uh, I think I shared this last week as well uh, if you look at uh, a, a, a pretty a pretty good book I would say uh, my Michael Babosin uh, on on let's see if I can get the the name right yeah, the success equation, uh, untangling skill and luck in business. And basically, he, he comes up with the question of, can you fail on purpose? Now, naturally, tr tr that question is meant to dictate how much skill and how much luck is involved. Now, there is skill, I would say, in money management. But there is luck, I would say, in analysis. Uh, naturally, that's not always the case. And, and a lot of things we focus on is finding out what are the driving forces. Is it yield spread? Is it sentiment? What, what are those driving forces? But at the end of the day, we do not know exactly where the market's going to end. And because of that, while you can blow up your account with the wrong amount of leverage, you can't blow up your account by guessing exactly where the market's going to go and, and trading opposite of that. And 
the, the example that he uses naturally is a roulette wheel and in the sense of you can you cannot dictate the outcome uh, the exact outcome and I would say similarly that in the market you cannot dictate exactly where the market's going to end up a week a month a year from now and because of that there's a component of luck involved uh, I, I say all that to say this the 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 helpful component I would say is to come in and say listen I'm, I'm going to favor momentum I'm going to favor when there is a a strong movement developing obviously the dollar right now is, is that main strong development happening uh, and and with that, I'm going to be very, I'm going to be very cognizant and very cautious of trying to fight strong trends. However, I don't want to be I don't want to be absent-minded of the fact that reversal can happen, and that's why I want to have either pending trades set up for those, or at the same time, want to have a look at those downside targets, such as okay, the trend is weakening, or maybe we break below that Ichimoku support or moving average support to show me okay, maybe I should be looking at some of these downside targets. Uh, the the quick refresh on SSI logic is mainly to help show that idea earlier said that we need to be focusing on trend continuation as opposed to trend reversal. When you look at SSI, which you can find on the front page of dailyeffects.com, we're looking at retail trader sentiment. Retail trader sentiment is famous for going with the gut, going for reversals, trying to get the quick money. And you know, naturally when you see a market trading at 14 year highs, like dollar index is doing, trading at the highest level since December 2002, a lot of traders are starting to think about starting to think about a, a mean retracement or starting to think about a reversal, how much money they can make on a, on a reversal. Uh, again, when you, when you step back, I think this is often the difference between institutions uh, and retail. Institutions are often looking at flow. They're looking at, uh, at, at pretty strong correlations. So what are, what are driving some of these markets? In fact, one of the arguments that I made yesterday is that, you know, the dollar, the dollar is a, not a proxy, but it's it's basically a delivery component for this depletion of these massive current account surpluses in countries like in, in countries like Europe and Japan. And as as these high yields in the U.S. relative to other places, money's going to continue leaving those shores for these high safe yields in the U.S., which is going to which could continue to to support the dollar strength. So. There can always be a reversal, and we want to be cognizant of that, but when you look at the logic of SSI, it's based on a flood of retail traders trying to call a reversal when there's a lot of fundamental flow components, sentiment components that are keeping a trend going that is, is often more likely to continue that trend going than a, a handful of retail traders trying to fight that trend. I hope I hope that makes sense. Uh, but that's that's where I talk about using these targets to spot reversals. You basically you want to you want to put that on the back burner and focus on that trend continuing as opposed to hoping that these downside targets are going to get hit in a bullish trend. Uh, the the <laughs> uh, the cheesy Sun Tzu quote there is basically I would just say you know from a trading component, while we don't control the outcome, we do control the exposure that we're going to have to the outcome. And that's, that again is where that's, that skill comes in. The luck really comes in at, you know, we, while we can put the components in order to set up how, how things are looking at, we do not know exactly where the market's going to end at the day or the week or the year. And, and because of that, that's where we're going to actually start to talk about volatility and using the, the handy evidence to build up a trading plan on an intraday basis. Uh, these are, uh, this is really, I would say, probably more of a more of a duplicate slide because it's talking about ways to ways to identify targets in the direction of the trends. We talked about using indicators there. So using volatility, volatility I talked about earlier as a as a breathing component of the market. If the market is quiet, volatility will be low. If the market is is high by its definition, or the market is volatile by definition, volatility will be high. Uh, with with that, we can use volatility, specifically the average true range, which I'll talk about in just a moment. Actually, the next slide, we'll talk about the calculation. But what I would say is that this, this allows us to have our expectations tampered to what the market is currently producing. Uh, I think a, a downside component that a lot of traders have when they develop their trading strategy is they'll look for round numbers as targets. So maybe they'll look at, you know, if uh, if your dollar is trading at you know, 103.75, they'll look for they'll look for a target at 103 because it's just a nice round number. And while there might be a propensity to see some reactions around that, uh, more often than not, what we want to see is okay on average over a five-day range, how much is the market trading? 
on average, if it's average true range, which again, we're going to identify next. And then we can start to, we can start to use that to, to, to give us these developing targets, these, these developing targets in the direction of the trend. You can see here volatility is at the heart of the Black-Scholes option pricing model, uh, something that is uh, gospel to how markets work and how to price risk and derivatives. Uh, the, the, the idea here basically is that by, by using a volatility filtered option, or excuse me, a volatility filtered price target, that's going to allow us to come in and say, this, this is a, this is a appropriate target given what we've seen in the market lately. All right, this is a just a quick introduction to ATR. Uh, average true range is going to take, and so I use a five-day average true range. It's just a bit, it's a bit more dynamic. It's a bit more responsive to what the market's doing. Uh, it's it's a non-directional indicator. And let me bring up the chart again and add ATR five, and I'll bring back up that slide. All right, so the five-day ATR on Euro USD is 107 pips. When you look at where does it get that 107 pips from, it's looking at a five-day average of these three components. And, and what it's doing is it's taking the largest of these three components over those prior five days. So it's either today's high minus today's low, which is the, today's range, today's high minus the previous close, or today's low minus the previous close. And you take the, the largest of that component, that's in, over, you take the average of that over, over X number of days, which you know, naturally we use, uh, we use a five day here. And what you're gonna see is that we're basically gonna just add that to yesterday's low or subtract that from yesterday's high in a bearish environment add it to yesterday's low in a bullish environment, and that's how we're gonna, that's how we're gonna build up these intraday price targets. And here's what it looks like with a little bit more detail. So these are the intraday targets. The intraday targets, again, yesterday's low plus ATR high. This is Euro USD. So yesterday's low in Euro USD, 103.92. You can see here, we had a, a net net, we had a bearish day because we, we had a, a lower low, or excuse me, a lower high than yesterday's high. We had a lower low in yesterday's low, uh, and and with that you could see the and in fact let me just paint this out for you. This is the ATR target. Let me change the color of the pin there, if I can. Let's see, if green works for us. Yeah, green works a little bit better. So this is the ATR target, which I'm going to show you the Excel sheet in just a moment, and then. Down here is the breakout target. So 103.25 basically is the breakdown target. 103.72 is the downside target. And that's again, that's yesterday's high minus the ATR. So 104.79 minus 170, uh, 107 pips, excuse me. And that gives us 103.72. You can see today's, uh, at the time, we're trading at 103.68. And let me just pull up EURUSD again. So we've, we've retraced a bit since then. But it's a, it's a very simple formula, and, and that's, that's really one of the key things that I wanna, wanna communicate here. Uh, let's go to US oil. Uh, I'm gonna bring up now, we had again the rollover, the rollover gap that Colin talked about as we went from uh, January to February contracts. So you could see there the bullish target, which is yesterday's, yesterday's low, plus the ATR is 53.015. So the high for today is 53.75. At the time that I updated the sheet, 53.58 was the, was the current spot price. Uh, the, the ATR, the five-day ATR, you can see there is uh, 152.5. So just, again, very simple. Adding this to yesterday's low gives us that bullish target of 53.01, and we surpass it on today's move. Uh, in fact, we surpassed the breakout target, which we'll talk about that in just a moment, how you calculate that. But uh, this, this just shows you how it's set up on the Excel sheet. And again, if you want this, if you do not have this, so more likely than not, you're newly registered to this program. If you'd like it, by all means, shoot me an email. I'd be happy to get the get the worksheet out to you. Uh, and it's something you'll just update daily for the new ATR uh, yesterday's high, low, and close, and then if you want, today's high and low, which I, I like to have updated as well.
All right, so the breakout targets. The breakout targets are, again, a bit more extreme. As we saw in EURUSD, not hit. Uh, and oil, they were hit. But the idea is that more often than not, they are going to be those, those outlier events, those two sigma type of moves on a, on a, daily, on a daily price range. I say, I say two sigma just to give you, again, that visualization of the Gaussian curve we looked at earlier with one sigma, and then, you know, which was the, the intraday price targets, one sigma being one standard deviation, two sigma, two standard deviations. So a rare, a rare event for that to get hit, and one that really we should only anticipate being hit if there is a, a volatile event like an FOMC or a non-farm payroll or CPI, some type of a fundamental announcement coming up. Uh, this, this is one that I will typically only look at, again, if we have a very strong trend, a very high important news announcement, which you can use the Daily effects like I'm not accounted for that. Uh, and if, if you're familiar with Camarilla pivots, uh, you could think of these as kind of the R5 or the S5, which traditional Camarilla pivots go up to R4 to S4. And R4 and S4 is basically going to be, R4 is going to be the bullish breakout trigger. S4 is going to be the bearish breakout trigger, but there's not an R5 or an S5. Um, and, and so what this is meant to be is, is basically that, that target once you get that breakout. Um, however, as you can imagine, Typically, those are going to be pretty close to each other. So I say think of these. I wouldn't I wouldn't use that in tandem with the Camarilla pivot because I, they're typically not going to give you a favorable risk reward ratio on the trade. All right. So the calculation for these and these are these are updated calculations. And uh, you can see there at first, I recommend grabbing a, a cup of coffee or <laughs> a drink of coffee to get some caffeine as we go through these calculations. I just got my swig. So what we're going to do is just show you how the bullish and the bearish tr target is, is created. And let me, in fact, just bring up. I'm going to bring up a snapshot. We'll do. We'll use dollar CAD. bring that up here so you can see how it's set up on the on the spreadsheet and again spreadsheet is available to you if you just shoot me an email uh, but for the bullish target you're going to look at the high over the low multiplied by the close so for the dxy and again i just have this up here on dollar cad to just show you how it's set up for the dxy yesterday's high was 103.21 Yesterday's low was 102.52, multiplied by the close 103.13. That gives us a, a high of 103.82. Now today's high was 103.65 as the time of of the update. Uh, in fact, let me pull that back up. 103.65. Yeah, still still the high. So uh, with with that, did not hit the breakout target. We did hit the bullish the bullish intraday target on DXY. The bullish intraday target was basically 103.39, 103.3877. Um, so with, with 103.65, we hit that, that bullish intraday target. But all that being said, you basically have this environment here that is looking for those more extreme moves. Now, we did not have massive DX, DXY news today, so we didn't have that real catalyst to give us there. Now, dollar is fundamentally the strongest currency right now, so it does meet that qualification, but we didn't have really that, that strong catalyst for the day. Bearish target, you can see, is taking yesterday's close minus the difference between the high and the close. So this is for Aussie dollar. So for Aussie dollar, you take yesterday's, take yesterday's close, which is 72.44, and then basically the difference between the high and the close. The high was 73.12, uh, low or the close was 72.44. Um, and so with that, that gives us a, a, a bearish downside target of 71, 70, 71, 75. All right, and you can see we did not did not hit that today's. Uh, and again, this, this I think this kind of comes into that aspect where we talked about this might be a 48 hour trade. Uh, you know, while, while we look at it intraday in spirit, uh, there's there's nothing here that I'm looking at with Aussie dollar that I'm saying, yeah, this is reversing. This is a this is a bullish setup right now. So this is one where had I ha had I exposure on the trade, uh, I'd probably be looking to you know just make sure my stops are set appropriately, but look to stay in that trade into that into that bearish target if I was holding it to the breakdown target, because that that 
bearish target of 71.75. You can see there, I mean, that's, that's, that's basically going to take us down here into new territory. But given the strength of this move, it looks like that's where we're heading. Now, for what it's worth, in Aussie dollar, we did, we did go ahead and hit the, uh, the intraday target. The intraday target was 72.38. And I'll pull this up here if you're just interested in seeing what it looks like. So you can see there, 72.38 is the bearish target. 73.16 was the bullish target. Did not hit that, didn't expect to hit that, just given the strength of the move down. So you can see there, how, how in the world does somebody keep track of all this? And, and hopefully you, you can tell, uh, it's definitely not in my mind. Uh, this is something that I rely heavily on uh, Excel, or you can use Google Sheets on. Again, I'll, I'll send you the Excel sheet that's going to have the calculations embedded in it if you desire. Uh, you can align this with strong week analysis by strong week analysis, meaning you know, whether whether you have a program that runs it or you have a manual analytical model, which you basically are sitting there and saying, okay, what's above the respective 200 period moving average the most? I like to use a four hour chart. And what's below the respective 200 period moving average the most? Right now, Euro and Yen are the clear weak currencies. Uh, you've got CAD and dollar holding up some of the stronger currencies out there. Uh, pound is slipping a bit over the last few sessions. Um, and and, and you know, right now, just kind of yet to be seen what develops with pound. I think it could, I think it could weaken a bit more. But all that, all that being said, you know, this is this is really something where you plug in an Excel sheet, and once the Excel sheet's set up, which ideally I've done most of the hard work for you, your job would now be, if you want to, you know, to update this manually on a day in day out basis. And just so you know how I how I get the how I get the levels is I I just come over here, put my mouse over yesterday's candle. Uh, you can see here there's a simple data window on trading view. Take the high, low, and close off of that. Once I calculate that, or once I input that, you can see I come over to the next. Um, take the high, low, and close from that component, so from today's candle. Uh, and then I also take the ATR, which you can see down here, daily ATR 74 pips. And plug that in and you're you're good to go and so it's 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 a very simple process so you can imagine uh, if you only have two three currencies you're focusing on it's probably take you a minute or less uh, because it is just a very quick input and then you analyze and again you look at what it's trending what's the strength there what is my focus and 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 from there really you've done a lot of the hard work now here's the here's the finished product just so you can see uh, and this is also on the sheet that I sent out to people because basically it just pulls the data from the other side and makes it a little bit cleaner and easier to look got resistance levels one two and three weak medium and strong support levels one two and three weak medium and strong typically this is going to be the high low of the session you know so these are going to be the kickoff points uh, this is going to be the intraday not always but uh, typically this is whoops this is going to be the breakout and this will be the breakout as well All right, so here's some of the key points that we've talked about over the past few sessions, and I think it's I think it's helpful when you when you look at how do I put this all together in a in a real trading plan. And so the recent key points here are we're looking at higher probability trades, and we're getting that higher probability trade by one identifying the trend and the momentum and the components that are supporting that trend, and then deciding to trade in the direction of the trend. And two, we're going to take the ATR the current volatility the market's giving us in that strong trend and build our price targets off of a combination of yesterday's counter trend extreme, so in a bullish trend yesterday's low, and the ATR to give us those intraday targets. Uh, again, to Colin's good question earlier, we can utilize the opposing trend targets to start to say, okay, if in a bull trend the bearish targets start getting hit, that that should notify us or signify that there could be there could be a, a turning of the tide, so to speak, and we need to be we need to be cognizant that that's developing. If you do get, let's say, Colin's example with oil, if you get two days of bearish targets getting hit or a breakdown target getting hit. That's absolutely worth 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 recognizing. I mean, that's that'd be very similar to trading with Ichimoku, and then all of a sudden you're trading below the the, the hourly or the four hour cloud. That's a, that's a significant development for an, for an intraday or multi-day trader. Uh, you can see there, do not enter trades when price is outside the breakout or breakdown target. Basically, the idea there is that the gas is spent on the move for the day. Uh, it's, you know, while trading in the direction of the trend covers many trading sins, it's still something we'd, we'd encourage you to avoid entering on an extended move. Uh, and then you can see there, ATR plus or minus overnight extreme will often 
uh, will provide common intraday targets. And what I often say is it's, it's, it's very impressive how many times the higher the low of the trading session is within, I would say, 10, 15 pips of, of that, of that, uh, of that target. And so if you can step back and get comfortable with the idea that more often than not, if you're bullish, you're not going to sell, you know, if you're in a bull move, you're not going to sell at the high of the, at the high of the day. If you're bearish, you're not going to buy or close out the cover, the short at the low of the day, the probabilities of that are happening are just not even worth considering. And so if you're looking at higher probability targets in the direction of the trend that you're focusing on, this is, this is one of the better methods I've seen. And again, by, by utilizing volatility, by utilizing this component that is breathing, you're not sitting there as somebody that's always using a 21-day moving average or always using something that is is more static when, it, when you have a dynamic market and it doesn't it doesn't respond well when the market changes. And that's again where I see a lot of traders get in trouble is they use one indicator. Perfect example I think is Ichimoku. You know, I, I I often tell traders I do not get paid for you to use Ichimoku. So by all means, if the market's ranging, get it off your chart. It, it provides no value. If if price is oscillating on either side of the cloud, like oil, like it was doing with oil for a while, the pullback oil, and Ichimoku is just it's, it's just flat out not valuable. There's other things that are valuable. Uh, now now that we 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 seem to be getting some type of a breakout, it's definitely something we want to keep back on the charts to keep an idea on but uh, all, all that being said this this methodology combined with identifying strong and weak I, I think is a is a very dynamic and helpful helpful tool to use uh, so with that uh, I will open it up for any final Q&A that you guys have Oh yeah, it's a very good question here. And Colin asks, so how do, how do you identify the entries? So my my preference, and that there there is no firm component for an entry in in this webinar or in this you know specific information set. I like to use either one hour or four hour Ichimoku, and with that, quite simply, I'm I'm looking for a move to the cloud or a move to the moving averages as support. If you if you go back and uh, and, and Joseph, if you wouldn't mind. If you wouldn't mind, just because once I close this webinar down, I'm not going to have that uh, that access to that email address. I'm going to go to this next slide real quick. Short answer is I'd be happy to, Joseph, but if you wouldn't mind sending me that email address to this email address, TL at Daily FX, uh, by all means, I'll, I'll, I'll get to it. All right, so Colin, appreciate your patience there. Uh, so what I like to do is, again, look for, in the direction of the trend, support. So what, what is trend support a bullish support and with that whether you use a moving average combination or I like Ichimoku a lot you can also use something more advanced like Elliott wave and look for counter trend patterns and breakouts against that against that counter trend correction uh, in, in order to get those those better price targets but in terms of what terp, what sort of entry do I use I am looking at retracements in the direction of the trend and I like to use a one hour or four hour Ichimoku so let me just paint that out since we have a little bit of time here very good question Colin let's go to Aussie dollar nope not one minute so this is this is setting up for what I think could be a good opportunity for a short because whether you look at a and this is a 50 hour moving average I'm going to take that out whether you look at here I would I would anticipate this starting to act as resistance now again there's multiple things that you can use a trader could use Fibonacci moving averages I like Ichimoku a lot that tends to combine a lot of different components together uh, but that's what I'd be looking at is resistance resistance with a trend identifying indicator like an Ichimoku. I hope that helps. All right, so with that, I wanna again wish you guys all a very happy finish to 2016 and look forward to trading with you guys in 2017. By, by the sound of it, we're gonna have a lot of volatility and some of it will be fun, some of it will be scary, but we'll, we'll We'll trade it all. <laughs> and so with that, I hope you guys have a, an excellent finish to the year. Uh, I hope you get to spend a lot of good time with your family. And by all means, uh, if you guys need need me for anything, 
don't hesitate to reach out to me. You have my email address there. You have my Twitter handle. And uh, look forward to being of service to you all next year. Take care.